thanks for making the trip out. This one you go to the cross country beach too. I'm Esther Aspel from SAU 16 in the central office with. Hi, I'm Chris Andrewski, assistant superintendent at the central office. Welcome. So we are going to spend a little time, kind of quickly doing a quick overview of CBE and um, which is competence-based education, and then we're going to go into the reporting system and Seesaw, which some of you, I think most of you are probably familiar with Seesaw and how the two are going to connect. So we'll let. Um, we just put up a definition, kind of a working definition that we're all using in SAU 16. All of our elementary schools, middle school and high school have this as a frame of reference. So as you can see, I'm not going to read it to you. Can everybody read that okay? Um, really, what we hope for is that we're moving kids on when they're ready, that assessment is valuable, that the students have a say, some agency in their learning. Um, all of this works to say that, right? It's just more a work. Definition. This is our vision of an SAU 16 graduate or a portrait of a graduate. Some of you may have been involved or may not. We did actually three and a half, we started, finished two and a half years ago. We did activities with schools and um, students and boards and faculties, asking them what kinds of skills do you want your child to have when they exit our system? So when they walk across the stage at Exeter High School, what skills do you want them to have? And everyone answered that question. We disaggregated all the results and then went to our institute led by Rose Colby. So um, she's a nationally known facilitator around positive-based education. And she helped a group that came in the summer of board members, community members, um, staff, administrators, to put those words into a vision statement. So this then went back um, out and that was done over the summer for vetting to communities and schools and we ended up here this is what we're trying to do and one of the reasons that we are moving to competence-based education is to enact this that everyone said they wanted so in other words you can see up here there aren't any content specific skills in other words it doesn't say math or physics or anything like that what it says is the skills we want our kids to have are we able to solve problems right work collaboratively be independent critical thinkers, really um, be able to communicate, have perseverance, be resilient, and have some empathy, right? So these are the skills that we're working towards through that learning process of competence-based education. Why we're doing that is because really, we're not really sure what jobs are gonna be in the next 10 years, what that's gonna look like, but we do know that they're gonna need these skills. So the research says these skills are what we want to ensure our students have when they leave us. So whatever they decide to do, or whatever technology is, or whatever the jobs are, they'll be able to participate and be good citizens and have a life where they have skills to manage. We all can think of times when we've used those skills, I'm sure, um, whether it's personally or professionally or both, right? So this next slide really talks about traditional education, what we went through mostly as, as, as uh, students to what we're, we're, we're shifting to with our kids. We look at really six different areas of, of how we're shifting. The first one is just the culture of school, where the teacher would teach and we'd sit and get, and now the, the school has changed where kids are, are uh, owning their own learning and the teacher is more that facilitator. Working with kids at their own levels, pushing them uh, on skills rather than just the content. So we're building on skills rather than just the content. Making all of our kids thinkers in each of the content areas rather than just memorizing to get the correct answer. We're starting to have learning progressions. Before it was get through the Algebra 1 book. If you didn't get through it, you didn't complete Algebra 1. Now we're saying, what skills do our kids need to acquire? It's not about getting through a book, it's about acquiring skills so they can be a student for that next math concept that they have to have, whether it's Algebra 2 or if it's a continuation of Algebra. Three, it's that learning pace. You know, before we all tested on Fridays, right? Spelling test, everyone gets their, their spelling test. Now there might have been two or three different spelling tests, but every Friday, every kid tested on, on Friday. With our learning pace, we only test those kids when they're ready to be tested. They've demonstrated the skills, then they get the assessment so we can see where they're at in their learning. The fourth piece, which we've been doing a, a lot of work on, uh, SAU-wide, is that instruction. How do we support our teachers? Because it's different. It's giving up some of that control in the room so that our kids demonstrate that learning and facilitate it. So you can see even here, flexible spaces, flexible groupings, uh, and our classrooms look totally different from the day we went. They're no longer arranged in rows, and we have compliant kids. We want kids to challenge our thinking and be part of that learning process. Assessment, how do we assess our kids? We'll go through an activity in a little bit that will highlight this, but before it was, you took a test, you got a grade, you were done. 
If you got a D, you got a D. If you wanted to make it up, you had to go after school. You might not have been ready for that time with the different things that we bring into school. Our kids, you know, they, they might have had a rough night, they didn't sleep. One time we took that test. You either pass or you, or you, or you fail. Now our assessment system is saying, when you're ready to assess, and if you don't have the skills and you demonstrate on that test, we'll test you again when you do so you can demonstrate your knowledge of those skills. Again, not the content, the skills that your kids can have. And the last part is the grading policy, which we'll get into, and how we grade. Um, so that will be highlighted in one of our last slides through Alma. So this is really the shift that we've been going through as an SAU to get to this point. Chris, before you move on, I sure. just want to point out that, as you can see the progression through, <coughs> grading is the last step. And that's the way we've really approached it in SAU 16, is that over the past seven years, we started really talking about instructional practices, um, things like instructional rounds, getting feedback, how to build collaboration, professional learning communities so teachers can work and talk with each other about assessment, how to create assessment so that you're measuring what the skill that you're trying to give feedback on to that student. So that's been going on, that professional development for teachers, for about seven years. So I just want to make that clear because when you see the reporting system, you'll be like, oh, how are they going to, you know, it's a lot. So we've been working towards that. We held off on a grading system, frankly, until teachers said our current report card doesn't really reflect what we're teaching. It's not giving our parents the information of what we're doing in the classroom, what your of what your kids can do. So when they started saying that, which was about a year and a half ago, then we started looking at proficiency scales and how to do a reporting system that would meet that need. So that's kind of just a it has been going on that professional development. I know it's a question that's come up from other um, parent groups that we've done. How far along are your teachers on creating QPAs? Uh, we started QPA training three years ago, um, and so they're creating them, they're validating them, they're collaborating them, they're working through that. We're creating a bank of QPAs, so they've been working at that process for about three years. Which so is quality performance assessments, for those who don't know. Are the rubrics that are being created with the QPAs going to connect to the reporting system? Yep, the rubrics are around the proficiency skill and the I can statements, the demonstration of skills. Those in I can statements are what's consistent through everything from the, from the assessments and the rubrics <laughs> to what you'll see in your seesaw accounts to what's on the reporting system. And we'll show you that connection when we get there. Okay? Good questions. So, just in a, in a quick nutshell, this is just the cycle of, of comp to based learning. Where is the child at now? What gaps or what extensions do we have to keep pushing them at? And then where are they headed? Okay. So that's constantly in all the skills that we're looking at. We want to say, where are they at now? Where are we trying to push them and are there gaps or do we need to extend their learning because they're demonstrating at a, an ability that they have acquired the skills? And then where do we push them next? That's what we're constantly thinking about. And that's what your, the reporting system will show. Where your child's at right now, in January when we push out the reporting window, and where are we heading with them in June? Different reporting system. It's not just stopping in, in January. We're saying, here they are, here's where we're gonna push them. So you're gonna have that uh, understanding of where we're trying to get with your child by the end of that grade level. What we're gonna do next is just show you two quick uh, videos. One is a second grade classroom. It's a charter school in Boston, Massachusetts, and it's gonna talk about uh, competency-based learning, and you're gonna hear from the kids the second one is from a six and a half year old student that talks about his learning. And I want you, when we go through these at the end, we're gonna share quickly out, but think about what, what's being said in both of these videos and, and what was an aha moment for you in one of the videos or both. What were you wondering about a snake's nose? Does it have a nose? Mm. You don't see it. No, but it, it has like a pit. Yeah, a heat pit. Creating works of excellence starts with inspiring students. Welcome to the second grade expedition celebration. Today, we are celebrating months of hard work and are premiering our ebook, Slithering Snake Stories. High quality reading, writing, and speaking happen when kids feel passion and purpose for their studies. In second grade, at Conservatory Lab Charter School in Boston, Massachusetts, students research snakes for their study called don't be scared, the truth about snakes. Look at her tail. What did you notice about her tail? Isaac. It's round and short. When student learning results in high quality products, there's a deeper level of effort and engagement. In prior years, studies of snakes culminated in books, posters, and a music video viewed by over 40,000 people. Don't 
this year we decided to create an audio ebook called Slithering Snake Stories. Each student authored their own page in the book featuring a unique snake, their narrative nonfiction story full of scientific facts with the scientifically accurate illustrations of the snake. Critique after critique, finally, our snakes began to look scientifically accurate. I believe that creating beautiful and complex work is the most powerful thing we can do with students. It transforms their sense of who they are as scholars and as people. And it's what inspires them to take on challenge, challenge like the Common Core or beyond. It's what motivates them to dig deep to create something of value. As an El Sistema school, Conservatory Lab has an active music program for all students. The class was able to record music to accompany their stories. In the spring, a mother coral snake laid her eggs and left them. They conducted field work at the Harvard Museum of Natural History to learn about snakes and their survival adaptations. But the deepest work that the class did was learning how scientists and nonfiction authors study their subjects and share their findings in ways that engage and inform their audience. Students learn to read and write with evidence to create works of beauty and quality. We've highlighted their journey in a series of short linked videos, building motivation and skill through whole class research building motivation and skill through independent research, using models and critiques to create works of quality, reading to get ready to write, and writing and speaking with power. The babies will probably hunt right away. Boba Constrictor goes to sleep with his eyes open in the Brazilian rainforest. Here's Romare. My name is Romare, and I'm six and a half. The thinking type is effective reasoning. It's when you, have, you try to prove something. So it's important because if you're trying to prove something to someone else, and it is true, but somebody else thinks it isn't, you could prove that it actually is true. You could write, um, you could make a chart of things that you think are, um, of things about it that you think are true. How do you know if you're good at a thinking routine? Since there's no right or wrong answer for some of them, it's like you try, you like find out, like you, you, if you're making a decision, you try that decision, and if it's, and if you actually like the decision you made, um, th that's how you know if you're good at it. Okay, if you can, just the next two minutes, find someone next to you. What was an aha moment? What was something that stood out with you? What was something that, that was different that you saw between these two videos? All right, I'm going to bring you guys back together. Is there any brave pair that would like to just share out with everyone? What, what was different? What was an aha moment they saw? It's always like this in the class, too. What was that different? Just the fact that um, they I don't know if I saw it. I noticed just how the kids were taking ownership really over whatever form of thinking. That first video kind of blew me away as mm. to like all the different avenues they were taking to learn. Sure. But I, yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't notice the specific things. But. Anybody else want to share? Sure. Yeah, I really like the connectivity between science, art, and music. Yeah. But, uh, just, it just kept the theme going. Right. That was really cool. Yeah, so we had this one big thing that met all of our content areas, right? We didn't have to have separate content areas to pull out an idea. One idea for all of our content areas. Yeah. One other thing that really, when we talked a little bit about Romare, six and a half. I have to prove my learning, right? Reflective thinking, I have to prove it. Six and a half years old, he's proving why things are right or wrong. Now, he even said, not necessarily are we gonna get there, but I'm gonna prove my learning. Think about if our kids are proving their learning every day, right? They're going to go back to that map that we had out or the vision statement of our graduate. Problem solver, resilient, um, reflective thinker. So these are the reasons we showed their exemplars, but this is what we're pushing towards. This is what's happening um, now in a lot of our schools and at Stratum. This is where we're, we're, we strive to go. Okay? So this is where we're going. We need a report card to reflect that out, though. So next thing we have for you is we didn't want to just sit and give you the information, so we're trying to model a little bit what your kids get. 
So you're actually going to do an activity. As a group, you guys are actually going to have to go do an activity today. Okay? So your job, okay, is you're going to get in groups. There's three tables. So you have to split yourself up, okay? And you're going to have to build a cell phone bridge, okay? I know everyone's got one probably in their pocket or in their jacket or purse. But it has to be, you're going to get eight index cards, okay? You're going to get some tape and you're gonna get some paper clips. You can build whatever you want, but the only rules you have is that it has to be at least two inches off the table, okay? It has to be at least six inches long. Now a hint, those index cards are three by five. Do whatever you'd like. Okay. The only thing you cannot do is tape your cell phone on the bridge, okay? <laughs> or tape your, your bridge onto the table because Esther and I are gonna come around and we're gonna do a, 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 a earthquake, bridge quake. Table quake. And make sure, and your challenge is to make sure your cell phone stays on that bridge. Oh, that would be way faster. Nice. That work? Well, it's too late. Nice. One on each side. Did you say you can't tape it? You can't tape it to the table. Okay. You can't tape it each other and you can't tape the phone to the bridge. You can't I still think you're going to be taller than two inches, though. Up two. It has Up to be. Two. It has to be at least two inches, right? I would turn around and read the screen. Wait, what is it? How to do this thing? We're going to get one more in. Mine is doesn't have to be and picked. Hands up, cell phone on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Which one? Who's it going with? Valiant gently, right, gently. Check the table quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on now. Hold right on. Now. You ready? Yes. Not <laughs> so we'll say that this group passed. Okay? You guys get A's. You guys can go to the next grade level. You guys failed. You're done. We're done with our assessment. Okay? Yeah. So you guys, there's no more recess, no more fun, because you've all failed, and parents are going to find out. So what we just did was how we traditionally assessed, right? So we're not going to do that. We're going to do it as we would in our competency-based learning system and our reporting system. This is what we're doing now. You're all going to get a chance to do it again. Okay? You're going to get a chance to, you're going to have three minutes this time to build a bigger, better product. And even though yours withstood it, how would you modify it? Okay. So this time, we want to think about what am I going to do? What are we going to do differently to build upon what, what we just saw? Okay. So think about that in a group. The other thing to think about is I heard the word, when are we going to test? No one tested for a quake. Okay. If you walk into any of our elementary classrooms, what are kids doing every day? Testing. And we're testing now. Okay. We're proving our learning, like Romare said. Romare said. So now we want you to prove your learning. Should we make it smaller? I you know, but the smaller it is. Let's just do it. Just throw in whatever. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. No. <laughs> we went backwards. <laughs> how, how this, going through this, how did it make you feel? Again. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Could everyone do it? Sure. Everyone could be a participant, right? Everyone could learn a little bit differently from, from other people you're working with. So this is, this is an activity that we're doing with our kids, and this is how we can assess them. And again, we just looked on skills. We didn't have one content, did we? It was skills and what you could demonstrate to us. Okay? And again, so many different content areas can be built in with the skills. That's, that's what our teachers are doing now, and we're seeing that a lot. That's what, Kate and the administration here are pushing. How can they bring their creativity and their connections to, to build a better bridge into this project? So now that we've had you kind of hear from other classrooms, experience yourself, we're gonna get back and we'll show you what the report card looks like. A platform called Canvas, which is similar to Seesaw to build a portfolio in. It's just much more in depth and much content rich, much more content rich, uh, much more complicated. For those high levels so they're beginning to pilot that now so when we get there they'll have our those kids will have practiced building those portfolios and have that experience question so gone are like the days of the gpa no 
Nope. Okay. Right now, those all that still exists, and I don't know what it's going to look like. Because remember, we're going to roll out next year. We don't even know if we're going to go chunk three, five, or three, four, five. We're going to receive that feedback from parents and administrators and, and um, teachers and see how that feels. Do, you, do we want to do another chunk, three, five, or do we want, we want to go year by year? Same thing will apply at the middle school, and then the high school will definitely phase in year by year by year, because it's not fair to our kids for them to have three years on one grading system and say, oh, we're changing it your senior year, right? Mm -hmm. So that definitely will be phased in 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see that's quite a few years down the road till it hits ninth graders. Mm -hmm. So as we're going through this process with all of you and your children, we also, colleges, we're seeing how they're transforming because schools are moving to these kinds of transcripts. So we'll be in a better place to make those decisions. That's why we're lead it's fluid. It truly is fluid. So we meet your needs as a parent. We meet teachers' needs and what they're trying to do and what reporting system works best for them. And we're going to find out what colleges, et cetera, want on that, up on that end as kids enter the high school. <coughs> but is it my understanding that all, all states aren't doing this? Yeah, right. not so all states are doing it. No, and that? not all schools in New Hampshire are doing it. Mm -hmm. I thought New Hampshire was trying it. We are one of the leading states in this area, but not every school is doing competence-based education. So how is that going to benchmark our kids later when they do go to high school and college and now they're applying for schools and we've taught something completely different than Massachusetts? Like how is that going to work? Yeah, which, remember we're still, we're still aligned to Common Core, which is the common across the United States as Common Core's are curriculums aligned to those. We're identifying the skills that align to those competencies. These are aligned with Common Core. So if you moved your child to Texas next year, they would have those skills that align with the Common Core skills. They would still be learning the content, but remember we're looking at um, Teaching it a new the, way. the skills in a new way. So a great example um, would be, we used to teach um, long division, right? We probably, most of us, although some of you look very young compared to me, um, there were certain steps. The teacher would write, step one, you do this, step two, and there was maybe six steps, right? Now we say to kids, Here's long division. You have a foundation in math now for math practice and understanding of math. How would you figure this out? Would you take, would you take a 10 base? Would you do as a manipulative? What would you do to figure it out? So they still have the skills, right, to do the long division, but now we're saying, what works best for you? You might round up or round down. You might, you don't, it's not a prescribed step. Because I learned math that way, and I did okay in math, all the way up through you know, calculus two, blah, 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 blah at right, college. But I don't understand math. I learned the steps. I memorized formulas to apply the derivatives. I, I couldn't do a derivative today if my life depended on it. I'd have to go back and look at the steps because I don't understand the math behind it. So we're teaching the, the, the foundational skills behind those concepts. So no longer will we teach Romeo and Juliet. We're teaching the skills. Who's the protagonist? You mm -hmm. might choose to read a different story, but you still have to learn the skill of who the protagonist is. So they're going to have the same foundation. As yes. Kids yes. in mass that are going to be going to the same. Yes, but now we're trying to get the student to own that. So not every kid loves Romeo and Juliet, right? So now you pick something that interests a high interest of you. I'm still going to make sure you can identify the theme of the story, the protagonist, the antagonist, right? But we're going to be use of ownership of how you're going to learn that. We're going to say these are the skills you have to demonstrate to us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So on this report card, it will be about seven pages long. Uh -huh twice a year because we report out on the competencies in those content areas. So this is language arts and this would be the same thing for math, science, social studies, art, music, and PE. They'll each report out on the competencies that they have, the skills that the kids are demonstrating. So these are the uh, five competencies for language arts that are reported out for semester one and the proficiency ranking the grade scale for each one of them. There may only be three, because they only worked on three competencies for semester one. There may be four, and then semester two, once they get into it. So if you start developing, we'll show you where we are. Okay. So each report card is going to have an I can statement of the skills that the kids have accomplished. This is what they've accomplished for this semester one. Here's where they're going next semester. So this is where we want them to go by June for each one of those uh, con content areas. So you'll know. This is what my child should be doing in language arts, based on the competencies, where they're heading for June. But those are standardized, and the, then you get to know which ones your child is meeting. Right, so let's say okay. you have twins. 
Those three report cards will look very different. Right. Right? Because you, most twins don't have the same exact skill level and everything across the board. So the eye cans are the standardized piece, right? Yeah. And then one twin might have seven here. Another yeah. twin might have three. And then you'll have what they are each working towards, and those will look different. Mm -hmm. But the foundation of the I can statements is the consistent piece that they're working towards. <coughs> so they pick those? No, the no. teachers will, will, will um, have assessed those. Mm -hmm. And that's when Chris talked about your seesaw account mm -hmm. with the artifacts and evidence. That's when also in here will be a link to your seesaw account where you can go back and review the student demonstrating. So I can show I know how, to, how books should be read. You might see your student holding a book and reading left to right. Mm -hmm. So that's the demonstration of, I can show that I know how books should be read. But why did you say sometimes there's three down there and se or seven down there? Because not all kids um, progress at the same rate. Oh. So remember, we're moving kids on when they're ready. Remember the bridge activity? Mm -hmm. The group that had a second try but still needed some more skill building? They wouldn't have, I could build a bridge. Everybody else in here would have, I can build a bridge, right? And then they're headed to the next skill. That group wouldn't have that I can statement yet on there because they haven't mastered it yet. So how are you determining though when a child is just being lazy and doesn't want to work? Because there are kids that need that extra push. So are we not pushing them at all? We're just saying, okay, go ahead and do it at your pace. And you know what I mean? Yep, I, I mean, I've talked with some teachers here who are doing what's called self-pacing. So there's still parameters around that for kids. So it might be, it, you've really got to work as far as you can, and the goal is to get through this, these eight activities or these eight um, units inside this larger unit in a three-week span. You work through it in two weeks. Okay, there's some enrichment activities for you. We're going to push you, right? You're struggling. That's when that one-on-one -on -one time comes, that skill building. What are you struggling with? You did one and seven and five and two, but unit three, what is it about unit three? So you set that classroom up so those kids are going at their own pace, but there's a teacher station and it's either a one-on-one -on -one or maybe all three of you are having a tough time on unit seven. So I'm going to give you direct instruction. Not all of you because you all have unit seven. You're okay, so keep working on unit eight now. You need unit seven. Come with me. So it's in the, within this bigger time frame, but now I'm being able to isolate a specific skill instead of waiting until January and saying, oh, you're failing math. You haven't turned in your homework, you haven't done this. Well, it's because probably you didn't know how to do it, and we didn't, so we got away back here. So in a way, moving on with ready should keep us much more informed about our kids, as well as giving you exactly what you need. In other words, if you take reading, you might be great at, at um, sight reading. You know every word. You can read a million words a minute, but you're not comprehending anything. I don't want to go back and work on fluency with you, right? I want to work on comprehension. So I'm going to be able to know that sooner and quicker and then work on just fluency with you because you can sight read and you can do that well. So now I have to work on how do you understand what the word means versus your comprehension is high, but your sight words are, are it's a low number. So you can read not a lot of books because you can't read the words. When you do read them, you understand them. So see how that would be a different skill I'm working on? I just wonder about for the teachers how challenging that must be for them because that's, I mean, <laughs> If I worked in an environment where, you know, everyone in, of 50 could move at their own pace, but the teacher has to be able to inspire each of those 50, that's a lot on them. Is there more resources, like, that will be allotted for? Yeah, and remember, you're not doing an individual plan for everyone, because yeah. you think of the response to intervention model, or RTI, about 80% of your kids are going to be in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. So really, you're concerned with that other 20% that are either excelling, or, or, or having or struggling. So 80% of your kids, generally speaking, research says, and has been proven over a, a RTI and differentiation has been around a long time. Um, the 80% of your kids are going to be at that same level. It's that other 20% we really target. We do the struggling learners. We have targets for those, right? We have interventions. You have reading interventions. You have IEPs. You have 504s. So there's a lot for those students. It's sometimes that upper tier, that upper 99th percentile, that we're not pushing that extended learning. So that's what we're really geared towards. You'll notice that many teachers will set up stations, or the workshop model I know here in Stratum, they use a lot. That's that station rotation, where you're doing a similar activity, so you're getting about 80% of that feedback, but you're still having a plan for that high, and some of those struggling students. That's always been the case for our teachers. They are instructing different though, right? 
because now we're not standing in front of you like I'm doing right now. We're having you do bridge stuff. And I'm recognizing, oh, that they need this X, Y, and Z skill building. These guys, I got to say, you know what? Go deeper. Go deeper. So it's not an individual plan for every student. So the I can statements for 80% of the kids are probably going to be very similar in this box in our reality. Does that make sense for people? The competencies that you spoke of, are they the same for the January report card and the June report card? Okay, so those are, like, mm -hmm. these are the competencies for second grade. This is where they are in January, these are. And are they the same for all of the students it, in the same class? The competencies are, are based on a grade span, so it's K2 and 3-5. Okay, so they're yes. the same for every Correct. kindergarten yep. or first grade. Yes. The competencies are the same, it's the skills that are different based on the grade level. It's these okay. that yeah, are, are different. So those statements, the competencies, are the same? Are the same. For kindergarten so or second yes. grade? Yes. Yeah. So the depth of knowledge that will change in the I can't. So, so if you have a kindergartner who's already at extended learning, they have the ability to bump up, teachers do, and go to the, the next level up of I can statements. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they have the ability to also bump down. Okay. So you might have a, a second grader that has a, a first grade I can that they have mastered and they're working on the next set. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of redo again like how that I can statement works in the sense that <clears throat> does each teacher have a set of I can statements that they're trying to get their kids mm -hmm. to? And how do we as parents know? Because like, let's say my kid only shows the yeah. three. This is SAU wide, so this okay. is what was developed across SAU at every elementary school. I okay. teach it. So this is SAU 16 maps for, for okay, a kid. Okay, so that's group. not like a kid just saying, ooh, I think nope. I can read books. So the teachers, the teachers come up with them. Yep. Yes. Okay. So we've okay. edited out based on national, because national there's a thousand of them yeah. for, right. for competencies. Yeah. SAU 16 met as a, as a group and, and established which ones they were the key indicators for those specific competencies. Okay. Will there be a learning habit section so that piece you're Good referring point. to? Okay. So yep. not on this report card. Okay. Report. We didn't vet that out um, as well as we wanted to, yeah. so we didn't add it to this report card. But there will be at the end is a, a yeah. just a, a general statement box okay. where your, your comment, are they just not yeah. working? They're not working up to their ability? Then you can look that's not a skill, that's a work habit. Yeah. So okay. we, wanted, we want to demonstrate the skills that our children have and then reflect out on that work habits in that in that box. Moving forward, that will be something we have, but okay. we didn't we didn't feel it was vetted well enough to be able to have it on this report card, so we did not. It's include a draft it. version mm -hmm. two. Understand? Okay, <laughs> sure. So I guess add so SMS teachers we met with K one and two, and they actually have a, a narrative for that section specific to work habits for kindergarten, okay. specific to SEL for kindergarten, okay. and then saying this is what we're doing across the board in kindergarten and here's how your child is doing. So Great. the narrative for that part would be the same for K and then your child specific underneath it, okay. the same for SEL, so that we're saying the same message that yeah. all K is working on these study habits, all one is working on these, to give you guys a picture of what, how that scaffolded out through the years. Other questions? I guess what I'm still concerned, I think it's great for kids that are progressing further or maybe above average, but the kids that are struggling, like let's say they can just never figure out how to put that phone on the table like that. Yeah. How do, how does it, I mean, the teacher must just progress them to the next level at some point. Right. And in we, math or reading or. We have that system now, right, as exists. Right. We, have, we have students that are struggling learners and always will be right. under the grade level, so to speak. We do progress them. We wouldn't keep them with kindergartners. Because when we were socially and emotionally, kids need new to algebra, with their group. new geometry. We, right? we saw a little bit of everything yep. in that old way. And mm -hmm. now I'm just concerned the kids that are struggling, they might just do algebra for the whole mm -hmm. year when they should have touched on whatever else they're supposed to touch on. So remember back to the RTI model, mm -hmm. and you have that 80% that are going to go this way. Mm -hmm. You have, usually usually it's about 15% that need a tier two intervention, which means I might give you a six week intervention, you got it, you're right. moving. Really generally about 5% mm -hmm. of our students that are either that 99th percentile or the third percentile. We do very different things right now for our third percentile. Mm -hmm. Many of them have individual education plans, which are individualized to the student. And sometimes they even have different programming, and that's through a process called IEP process, which is a team that builds goals for that student. So that those goals may be reflected in a different way on here. Mm -hmm. it, that would be in the comment section. It would be, they would still have I can statements, but as a parent, you would already be well informed through the IEP process about what ch your child is working on and where those skills are going. We would not keep that child in kindergarten. They would progress with their age appropriate and right. peers. 
And that exists now. That system exists now for us. Forgive me if I misunderstood, but how in looking at this report card do I know or understand where my child is traditionally in grade level? How do I look at this and say, okay, she's where sure. traditionally she should be or mm -hmm. she's not? Mm -hmm. Sure. And it's going to be proficient traditionally where they're going to be at. If you see developing, they might not have the skills to be on grade level. Again, we're, we're trying to take out grade level and, and work on skills. But if it's the same for kindergarten and second grade. It's the same competency, not the same skills. So what that means is you have a parent conference in November, so that's part of that conversation with the teacher. And you want to ask the teacher, is my child with the norm, so to speak? Are they on grade level? Are they within the grade span? Are they making progress? Right? Those are all really valid questions to ask. So our teachers, again, have all the I can statements, right? And I believe those are also going to be on the web page yeah. for you yeah. to look at also as a parent. So you also can look there. But it's really your conversations with your teachers that will help. Also that CSAR account. Remember, that's coming out on a regular basis. So you can access that and see your I can. So if you see your child not progressing, that's any time any of you can call up mm -hmm. Kate and say, hey, I want I need a conference. I'm not sure how this is working. It looks like my kid's not progressing at all, right? So those are, that's the reason we want to do that regular dip sticking with the seesaw so you have a good indication but if you're ever feeling like you're not sure please 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 contact call you know voice that that's the feedback also we're looking for is this doing what we hoped it will do so because this is the same for kids that are five through seven maybe eight years old and you would expect a pretty large range of skills between those ages yes like wouldn't you expect in kindergarten to be D or P most of the time, if that same set of competencies is, holds for all those same age ranges. Yep, and they're measuring that proficiency member against these I can statements. So really that's what you're, I see. So right? So those are the grade, grade level numbers. foundational okay. skills that you're, you'll notice those so will change and get deeper. you kindergarten because you can do all yes. these things. Correct. The next, I understand that. Sorry. Okay. Wait, wait, wouldn't you just start well, with the B? What will the November I know we'll be speaking to teachers, but will they, will we have the same reporting? No. Is what we'll get, and we'll, you won't we'll see this in November. November. There'll be a conversation. conversation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and they will be using that proficiency scale. So you'll be seeing proficient. You know, those conversations will be on this assessment. They were proficient, and this is what they're working towards. Okay. You certainly should see some of those things in Seesaw also along the way. Okay. We're hoping that there's a, a content-specific posting each month. So something about math, something about science, something mm -hmm. about social studies tag with an I can statement. So you, this is not this should not be a surprise to you in January. And we should already be getting things like this you now. You should be getting some seesaw posts, yes. With I can statements. We're working on, on connecting the I can statements okay. right now. Okay. Yeah. So you should just be seeing posts now. Teachers have that time, right, to practice and get and then um, we loaded the I can statements into Seesaw and Alma so they have access in Seesaw. And so we're working towards that. Yeah. I'm sorry, you said this will roll out then. January. January. Okay. Yes. Yep. And again, we'll meet with parents, teachers, uh, administrators in February. Mm -hmm. How'd this work? Yeah. What, what, this is a truly a prototype. This is the first in New Hampshire. So when we created this, we created it with Alma. Um, not the standards. A lot of the schools use standards based. This is we're pulling it towards that competency because that's what we believe. Because uh, everything that we really are doing is towards that that uh, graduate statement. Um, Sorry, can't here. So as we gather that feedback in February, again, this is just like your phones, right? Now there's what, an iPhone 12? So, we're, you know, we're in that age of education now where we take information and we improve it, just like you did with your bridges. We're going to do the same thing with this reporting system, with Seesaw, we take that information. What can make it more helpful? What makes it works better with teachers? What do administrators think? What do parents think? Was this information, was the report got too long, too short? Was the comment section too big? We're gonna ask for that feedback in February and make adjustments. And we're not in the um, education frame anymore where we've developed a report card and that's it, right? We've got to be flexible and fluid because we have to get that input from you. We have to get input from teachers. We gotta get input from kids because hopefully what we want is our kids to know their I can statements. We want them to verbalize, right? To be, I can, I can read. We want them to know that, we want to own that learning. So how do we get there? Because that's really the crux of it. It's how do we get our students to own their learning and understand where they're going, what they're working towards. Because we all know if we feel like we're making progress, what happens? 
we intend to engage more, mm -hmm. right? That's what we want with our kids. We want them to have ownership of that learning. Two questions, Nancy. Okay. Sort of along that lines, I'm, I'm wondering about um, the content piece. Who's choosing the content? Do the students have, is there more flexibility in content? Is it Common Core? It's, it's aligned, those I can statements are aligned to the Common Core. Mm -hmm. However, we're back to students um, teaching the skills. So let's say um, you have a student that loves mythology, um, but you're trying to teach some informational text, right? So someone might choose informational text about snakes, and someone might choose informational text about mythology, how it was developed. So we're at the skill. I can take informational text and understand it and tell you what I've read about. So now I'm testing comprehension too, right? But we're giving them ownership and flexibility to say, how, how do, what venue do you want to learn that okay, with, right? Awesome. There are also some still non-negotiables for teachers, right? Yeah. Teachers are still going to teach counting like they've taught counting. They're still going to teach yeah. multiplication. Those some of the, there's some non-negotiables that we know every kid needs these foundational skills, right? Those are still existing. Yeah. But when there's opportunity for student ownership and flexibility, that's when we're trying to provide it. Okay. And that's the shift for teachers. Engage the kids, though, like, yeah. okay. Great. Question. Um, I know that there's been a focus on, you know, the school as a group and collaboration and all that, but on the assessment, social emotional, how is that integrated like, you know, I, I'm a good I work well in a team or yep. is there anything of that that's reflected in that reporting? Or? So that we call generally right now work study habits. Oh, okay. um, we have a version two. It won't be on this report card. So it, we've made it an acronym at this point called CARES and each letter stands for C is for collaboration and then it has the yeah. I can statements under C. So that'll be on the report card. In the future, we just didn't have a good vetting system yet. We didn't want to roll it out without the teachers really looking at it and making sure it's meeting their need. So right now, it'll be in the comment section. Okay. Like, yeah, that's kind of what Kate spoke mm -hmm. to. You want to say so I think you're asking a lot of specific like SMS questions at this point, and I feel like next Thursday there's the fireside chat to answer specific SMS questions. Because I think right now they're keeping us at like that thirty thousand foot view, like SAU sixteen. <laughs> so like when you're talking about like the work study habits or the SEL, those are actually so we're using Choose Love and Second Step for our two programs to do that work mm -hmm. with our kids, and so we'll be able to speak specifically to those skills and dispositions and mindsets specific to SMS, and that's why it's not on the SAU sixteen yet because all the elementary schools haven't had a time to do it collectively. So we're still doing because all our school. elementary schools teach SEL. Mm -hmm. So all our elementary schools right. do a universal <coughs> screening, DESA. And right. then some schools use Choose Love, some use Open Circle, mm -hmm. some use Responsive Classroom, some use Restorative Justice. Mm -hmm. They're all that same, again, those same foundational skills for our kids. So we have to make that CARES or report out fit and be generalized for the I can statements. I can collaborate, I can work with a group, general, so it can be on an SAU 16 reporting system. Even though Stratum is using Choose Love and Second Step, then the skills in that will be incorporated into that CARES. But it sounds like you have a system that you're going to use that you'll hear about the fireside chat next week, specific to SMS right now. And specific to questions you were asking too about content versus mm -hmm. competency. Like those are all things we'll discuss and that are specific to SMS, which this is super helpful like globally, but I think yeah. if you're looking about your kids in these classrooms, we can answer those questions. <clears throat> Any other questions? I guess my only one that I think can be a global question too is do you anticipate um, testing, standard testing is still not to occur? We still are mandated like, by the state to do the mandated right? testing, yeah, which so is now okay. called the SAS. Yeah. Um, yep, we do all, we'll still do that. And these skills, again, are aligned to the Common Core, so they'll be prepared to take okay. that. In fact, because it's more inquiry based mm -hmm. and workshop model, those students should have better skills mm -hmm. right. to manage those questions and not be so content specific, mm -hmm. but it'd be applicable to any um, question that might come up. Mm -hmm. So we anticipate there may be, you know, a test score. It's always a dip, and the state of New Hampshire keeps changing the test scores from, from NEAP to NECAP <laughs> to SBAC to SAS. So we can't really longitudinally look at scores right now because they've changed it so much. So I think this is year three of the SAS finally, mm -hmm. um, which is the same exam. They changed the science test on us last year, mm -hmm. so those scores I can't look at longitudinally. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's we're third enough, right? That's yeah. Not third. Third. Correct. Third. Yes, that's third enough. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. It was yeah. Okay. Are you guys benchmarking the performance of company-based education here against other states, other districts? Like, right. how long has this? theory of education existed and has it been proven in other districts? Right, it, it really began in 19, I might have, I have this wrong, about 1950 in the state of Massachusetts with, do you remember the woman's name? No. 
I can't remember her name. Do you remember her name? Michelle, but I can't remember her last name. Um, she did uh, schools in Boston because they were in such disarray. Um, yeah, I remember her. So she went in and did students' engagement and inquiry and really worked on this. And it was very successful, however, at that time in the 1950s with the, all of the other things going on in the work field. They just couldn't move it. They just couldn't move it. Um, and other, other things along the way have not been competency-based. Even differentiating instruction is a piece of competency-based education. Now, though, we're really focused on getting that student engagement, let, using that inquiry to move kids. And um, so it's been around for a long time. It always hasn't been called competency-based education. Um, so we're also working with Two Revolutions, which is a um, consulting firm that's been with us now in year two this or year three. three. Year three with us that um, works around the United States and actually internationally on competency-based education and has given us the resources and, and the research underneath it for our teachers. I mean, so many resources and research that sometimes teachers are like, that's too much. There's great resources for parents. There's um, great books about it, longitudinal to look at the books. Yeah, so we're, in, we're also, you'll be seeing coming out a, uh, a CBE parent resource page on your school, like a link from your school web page. So we're going to put those applicable articles there so you can read those. But um, yeah, it's definitely research-based, and it's definitely the direction to go. And we really do believe that in SAU 16, uh, to move kids on ready to meet their learning needs. Um, we're, but we're taking our time. We're not going K-12. We're not, you know, we're really going slow and strategically trying to make sure that we're doing the very best we can for your students. So it's slow. No, it's slow, but that's okay. I hope it's okay with you guys. Yeah, it's slow. Um, so, I, so it sort of sounds like these kids coming through will kind of be like a test as they age through the system. They're kind of like a test class, I guess you would say, because they're starting with the changes, right? There's, they're, they're actually not the test because okay. remember we have been practicing these CBE yeah. instructional practices along the way yeah. based on the, on the student engagement and the feedback we've gotten from parents. We know that it's been working. So now we're just formalizing the grading process. We have been teaching this way. You've probably seen project-based learning, workshop models, um, move at your own pace in math units. I know those things have existed here at Stratum, and our schools have been doing similar kinds of prototype and innovative ideas. Our high school and middle school are doing those things now, too. So as your kids come through, those teachers will have experienced that type of instruction and shifting. Again, 2Rev is working with all of our administrators and going into schools and helping model instruction and support those teachers. So it isn't the first experience of that learning that way. It is the first time we're using a different report card. That's really the biggest difference for this particular group of kids. I think where I'm saying, just I can't get over like the disconnect between, so all of that makes perfect sense because you're laying the foundation and everyone's learning. And then in jobs, like in life, you, this competency-based reviews is basically mm -hmm. how a lot of companies operate. Right. But the hurdle that I see in the middle is, is college, because unless college, and I don't know, I haven't been in college in a while, but I don't know, you know, at some point it's just like you're graded and this is kind of the way it is. So, so colleges in New Hampshire are already evolving, sort of mm -hmm. Southern I'm New Hampshire sure. University yeah. is competency-based. They don't require a GPA, they, they're mm -hmm. looking at competencies. Mm -hmm. University of New Hampshire just took away the SAT score, which is a big deal for the most yeah. traditional university system in our state. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So they're moving and shaking because they're recognizing mm -hmm. that the students are coming to them yeah. with different skills. Right now, they're used to getting, mm -hmm. frankly, um, research has shown that our, our students as a whole that graduate in 12th grade, their first year in college, they're taking um, remedial math. So you're paying for at least a semester, sometimes a whole year as a parent or a student or student loans for remedial because we're not teaching those kids the skills they need to move. So that's why we had to change our system, truly, in education in general. Um, dropout rate, completion rate for um, college, high. It's a lot. If you don't have perseverance and empathy and problem solving yeah. skills and you can't critically think, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And you can probably reflect back, you've had some experiences when you had those shifts, or that you moved and you got married and all those things that happened to you that if you haven't had that skill of foundation of how to solve a problem critically, you, you get into trouble. It's frustrating, it's discouraging. And if you're a freshman in college, many students either don't go to class, they can't do the work, or they return home. We, we're want, we want people to have skills so when they head in as freshmen in college, they have some coping skills, they can go in at the level they're not having to remediate, and they can move forward and feel successful. So they complete. So they complete. Or a trade, too. I mean, not exactly. every child is going to go to college. Absolutely. Military. I think, anything. I think also 
knowing the kind of learning and skills that our teachers and advisors will be able to really hone in on somebody who's 18 yes. and what maybe they would be a good fit for. And I feel I, like Right on yeah. your same wavelength, I just want to put a plug in as um, parents. Don't forget to look at the Seco School of Technology. Right. That is an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome opportunity you all have for your students. Those programs are amazing. They are competency-based, right? There's clear competencies right now. Mm -hmm. They can get micro-credentials. They can get a year of college already ahead. Um, they coordinate with Great Bay. I mean, it's just unbelievable, our SST. So as you think about the future for your own children, don't, make, don't take that out of the equation for sure. That's a, just an unbelievable great opportunity that's available to all of you in SU16. So I hope we answered your questions. Again, Esther Rasbell. Chris Andrewski. Our emails are on the web page. Just Google my name. You'll probably come up with some, some new paper article or something I was in, I'm sure. Um, so, but you can connect to me. You can connect to Kate. They, she can get you to us if uh, you have further questions about this. This is taped. It should be up hopefully within a week, Doug, give or take. Yeah. Uh, and we'll have a link on the webpage, so if you have friends that wanted to, couldn't make it tonight, tell them in about a week that'll be up and they can experience the same conversation and the great questions you all asked. So I appreciate you all coming. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much.